Well, good morning, ladies. How's everyone doing this morning? All right, awesome. I'm gonna ask everybody who's still in the foyer to come on in. Where's our students at? All right, welcome, welcome to everyone who is here. This morning, last night was incredible. We, we had an incredible word by Audrey and today there's a lot of amazing things planned, but we are so honored to start this morning off by just glorifying God and giving praise to the one who is worthy. Amen. Can't wait for it. 
join the song of heaven and the angels. He's so worthy. Lord, what an honor. Jesus, we give you worship from our hearts. I thank you, Lord, as we turn our, our eyes, our attention on you, off of ourselves, off of our circumstances. I thank you, Lord, you bring peace to situations, peace to families, peace to marriages. Lord, I thank you as we turn our eyes on you and off of ourselves that I thank you healing is manifesting, restoration, freedom in our hearts, in our minds. We worship you, Lord, and we honor you. You're holy and you're perfect, Jesus.
good and he's so faithful he's so worthy and holy so why don't you just greet someone around you say good morning we'll take a moment here as we as we transition it was just an awesome time this morning My favorite person in the whole wide world is my mom. She has always been the coolest role model to me, and I have really no words to describe her. She will always be my favorite person. She's always known specifics about people's lives, lived in the prophetic, known what to pray for. But I didn't know that God wanted that level of a relationship with me. My mom, has been struggling with chronic health issues for many years. For a long time, I was in fear and confusion, wondering why is my mom constantly sick and in pain? I didn't know if the Lord was trying to teach us a lesson, and I didn't know if I had any way of actually making things better. When I was 13, I cried out to the Lord at a conference. The fear that my mom was going to die was overwhelming. But I heard the Lord in that moment tell me she is not going to die. The moment that the fear was broken, I began to cry and laugh and speak in tongues for the first time. Uh, years later, I began attending Karis, and already I've learned so much. I know that the Lord is the healer, Jehovah Rapha. That is who He is. So he did not make my mama sick to teach us a lesson. He didn't make her sick, period. I've begun to understand that I, just a 19-year-old weird girl, can just make an impact for the kingdom of heaven. I have authority in my words. Now I pray and I expect results. When my mom is in pain, I can know that there is movement and restoration when I speak and declare the name of Jesus over her. I have the authority of Christ and His words within me. I went from praying as a routine to knowing what prayer really is and that there will always be results when I speak. I've gone from only seeing the Lord in other people to knowing that He is my Jesus. I'm His favorite. And through my time at Karis, I've learned that I am a steward of the Lord's authority. I carry that authority simply because He loves me. The more that I learn about God's love for me, the more that I have to actually outpour on others. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Welcome to Women Arise 2023. Welcome to those of you that are watching online. We're so glad that you are joining us this morning. We hope you were here last night as well as anybody that's in the house. Is this your first time here? First session, first time on campus? Amen. Well, welcome. What we want you to do is make sure you stop by our first time visitors booth. Why? Because we have a gift for you. So please go by there, get your free gift. We have workshops happening this afternoon. Anybody excited about the workshops? Well, I want you to take a look in your program. It'll tell you where each and every workshop will be located. And we're gonna have a Q&A panel on Saturday, tomorrow. You can start turning in those questions. Any questions that you possibly may have, except for why is the speed limit 22 point Don't even ask that question. Andrew just chose it. It's not a scripture. You will not find it. He just chose it. So that's one question down. But we want you to get your questions in for the panel. The panel is going to be on tomorrow at 1. And on the panel will be Carrie Pickett, Audrey Mack, Miss Elizabeth Murin, and myself. You can text your questions to 719-212-2222. 
2555, or you can email them to livequestions at awmcaris.com. Does anybody like pumpkin? That's great, because guess what? We have free pumpkin lattes. Yes, but it's today only, so you better go and get it. And it is while supplies last, so it's today only, and we want you to make sure you go there, but you know what? You have to go upstairs. Gotta go upstairs to go get that. And when you go up there, make sure you browse around. Did anybody, has anybody been upstairs yet? There's a lot of different, the speakers have items up there, but there's a lot of other different vendors that have some product up there. Do you like my? Well, uh, she doesn't know I'm gonna do this, but Miss Katrina Amstead Washburn, she actually did this, she designed this, but she is upstairs. So go up there, say hi to her, see all the other vendors that are up there as well. We also have a conference only offer. And what this is, it's a unique offer. It's $69 only, normally it's $81. And you can have the conference recordings on USB, CD, or DVD, a stylish tumbler, mm-hmm, a Rise Up decorative gift bag. And you know, why not just go there? It's, it's in the resource area, but why not grab this and just worship the Lord? Not just do uh, Women Arise this weekend, but just really soak it in all year long. And with that, I'm gonna give away some product. Last night, Ms. Audrey, she was telling us about our purpose and that God has a purpose for us. He, we, it's a purpose that he planned in us. Well, you, you have a true identity. You know, sometimes people don't know who they are. But Ms. Carrie Pickett, she is, this is a, um, a devotional. It's called True Identity. And we need to know who we are. Because if we don't, we'll fall for the lies of the enemy. Because he, he is subtle, and he will try to mix a little bit of lie with the truth. So it is important to know who we are in Christ. And choose life. I like this. This is nice. Interviews and testimonies about choosing life. You know, the other day I was just thinking... And I was thinking about when I was born, when I was conceived in my mother's womb, my parents, they were not married. And I was like, I was conceived out of wedlock. Praise God, though. Praise God, they chose life. And they did not abort me. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, that was during a time that it would have been a lot of ridicule, and it probably was a lot of ridicule for them to be, for me to be conceived and they were not married. But I praise God that I am here. Why? Because I have a purpose, and I know who I am in Christ. I know my true identity. So I am just thankful to God. So Choose Life, that's a teaching by Andrew's interviews about different people choosing life. Amen. And at this time, you know, it is my pleasure, it is my privilege to, enter to you, introduce to you our speaker for this morning. And I know you all know her, Miss Carrie Pickett. Or should I, Mrs. Carrie Pickett. She, I'm telling you, she is the Assistant Vice President of Caris Bible College and Andrew Womack Ministries International Operations. Okay, I'm not going to say all the stuff she does. She got a lot of hats. She wears a lot of hats. But let me tell you something. First and foremost, she is a ninja warrior kicking some devil butt princess. First and foremost, that's who she is. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's an author, she's a teacher, she's a missionary leader. I mean, she was in Russia for 16 years, over 30 nations. And when you really, when you hear her teach about the love of God, I remember when I was a third year student when you came back from Russia, you and Mike, and I was sitting there and you were teaching about the love of God. When she really, Teaches, she wants people to know their identity. If you really grasp and hold how much God loves you, you can change the world because you know who you are. 
I introduce to some and present to others, none other than Mrs. Carrie Pickett. Good morning. Would you like your glasses, ma'am? You didn't even use, you don't need them, girl. But you look stylish. And... Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Isn't God good? Well, we have some amazing things planned for you today. I want to thank Audrey Mack for a powerful evening last night. That was amazing. So we have some amazing things that we are going to do today. I'm going to be sharing with you. And then we're going to have a great break where you can go shop and get your latte and all that kind of good stuff. And then Audrey's going to be sharing again uh, this afternoon, well, this morning. And then we are going to introduce and we are going to present to you guys one of our productions overturned. And so you guys actually get to see a production while you are here this morning. It is absolutely powerful. And I believe that it's going to touch your heart and equip you in some really powerful ways. So we're going to do that. That's all before lunch. And then we are going to be able to have lunchtime. And then we got some tremendous workshops today. Guys, I'm going to really encourage you to be here for these workshops. We have four tremendous speakers. And we'll tell you a little bit more about them here later this morning. But they are awesome. They're all handy handpicked for just the truly the message that God has on their heart. So we really prayed, asked the Lord who was supposed to share, what they were supposed to say, and for you guys during this conference. So we'll be doing that this afternoon. And then again this evening, we have Elizabeth Murin. So if there are two women in my life that can sharpen me, it's Elizabeth Murin and Audrey Mack. They kick me in the butt. And you always need two women alongside of you. Everybody needs four crazy friends. These two equal together are four crazy friends in my life. <laughs> Amen. All right, so I am excited about sharing with you this morning. You know, our topic, your time is now. I mean, there's a lot of directions, honestly, that you could go with this, but obviously we're gonna go the direction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> It's always a good direction. And one of the things as we were praying about this season, as we were praying about what to minister to you, it's that, you know, the enemy's lies is always later. It's always later, like when, when this happens. Now, how many of you are huge list takers? How many of you have a side list while I'm preaching? You've already started it. Be honest. Not yet. I bet, I bet by Audrey Mack you got a list going on. But what happens is we as, as women, as individuals who have a lot of different things happening within our lives, um, we're always in the moment trying to solve questions, answer things. Your brain is full of a lot of different directions. And what can happen is the thing that Audrey was talking about last night of the dynamic of us fulfilling our God purpose and our God destiny. And can I say this right now? Because as she was talking last night, I felt like the Holy Spirit said something to me. That there are those in the room, and you are using age as a disqualifying mark to destiny. And I don't know what age that is. You could be 40 and say, oh, well, I'm 40. You could say, oh, well, I'm 50. Oh, well, I'm 60. I don't know what age that is, but some of you, that's your disqualifying marker. It's like, well, I've already lived a lifetime. I've already had kids, and now we're grandkids. And it's like, for me to start over, to reinvent myself, to become what God's made me to be, that, no, I'm just too old. You know what? Then guess what? You'll be the same old, same old, same old, same old, same old frustrations, same, di same difficulties, because the enemy sees that you're willing to stay stuck. And staying stuck, I remember when my uh, pastor, Pastor Lawson Purdue, when I was growing up, he said, you know what a grave is? Or he actually said, you know what a rut is? And we say rut, that's how you say it in Colorado, a rut. <laughs> my husband teases me about saying rut and wash. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash some laundry today. He goes, you gonna do what? I'm gonna wash. He goes, oh. I'm like, you know what? Why don't you wash the laundry yourself then? <laughs> 
can tease me about me washing stuff in the creek bottom on the roots of the creek, right? There's a whole lot of redneck in me. And I do a lot to hide it. Okay, so, um, so what can happen is, you know, you can, uh, when you talk about this, this rut, that you can get into, you know, and you get, you know, you get stuck and you get caught in a ruck and you're just trying to, you're trying to get out of it and you just get deeper and deeper and deeper. And he, he said this, he said, a grave is basically a rut with the, a rut is a grave with the two ends knocked off. Because you just, you just stay in that place. And it takes intentional relationship with God to keep moving. Let me say that again. It takes intentional relationship with God to keep moving, to keep growing, to not get settled into routines. And when I say routines, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's things that you're not doing, right? You still, you know, you might have job, you have profession, you have ministry things that you're doing, you have, uh, you have disciplines, you have, you have, there's all kinds of different things that you may be doing, Right? But what happens is you can get into a rut of just being comfortable. Well, this is good as it will ever be. And God's not wanting you to stay comfortable. Amen. He's called you to be people that make other people uncomfortable. <laughs> Amen. He's called you to be the one that makes people uncomfortable, that you get them out. You get them out of their complacencies and you're the ones that are saying no God can do more but if the enemy can get us in just this rhythm of comfort right and that can even be doing God things you can get comfortable doing God things and when God starts calling you into a new season you go oh no God I'm busy for you here <laughs> amen and so what we need to what we need to learn how to Develop is the relationship with the Holy Spirit that continues to challenge us to growth. Yes. And we stop using age, we stop using health, we stop using other things as excuses. Because you are loved by God. And God's love for you is something he wants to continue not only to reveal to you, he wants to reveal through you. And the power of God's love through our lives changes the world. I want to read a verse here this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. And I'm going to read it in the NIV. If you guys don't mind, I'm reading it in a couple versions. And so in the NIV, it says this. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. And throughout some of the verses I'm going to read to you today, it talks about today is the day of salvation. And praise God, how many of you have received Jesus? Amen. So today is your day of salvation. It's not, just, it's not just when you received Jesus, that was your day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. This means all the might and all the power and all the goodness of the kingdom of heaven is available to you now. Not later. And so when we say oh, your time is now, this is what the enemy will do. The enemy brings up all the reasons why the time is not now. And you know what? They sound very logical. They sound very practical. In fact, some of them are very realistic why the time isn't now. But the enemy is telling you that your temporal world and your temporal situations are the voice that should guide you. That what is in the natural has to be what steers your life. And you and I being born again, filled with the spirit of God, means that now because of the kingdom of God living inside of us, we're the bosses, not the natural. Well, you did not get excited about that nearly enough. The supernatural power of God in you is the power to tell the natural that it does not have the authority or the voice to tell you what you can and can't do. And the natural, and guys, I'll tell you, the natural feels very real, doesn't it? 
It's the aches and the pains. It's the doctor's report. Come on. It is the bill that's laying on the counter that keeps getting piled up with the second bill and the third bill of the same bill on the same counter. Right? It's, it's the tension that's in your home or in your marriage. It's the conflict maybe at work. Right? It feels very real. And what we do is we will adjust ourselves to handle the natural. Right? We adjust ourselves. We put things in line. We'll put things around it. We shore up things to manage the chaos, manage the drama, hopefully try to do something about it. Or we adjust, and this is even worse than just managing chaos, we adjust to try to save everything around us. That we're trying to be the ones that save the day. And listen, you and I have no power in our natural ability to touch and change natural things. You do not have the power to change your husband. You don't have the ability to make your kids love and follow God. Man, that'd be a superpower I wish I had, that automatically my kids just... Now, do my kids love God? Do they walk after God? Yes, but I also, I also want it to be theirs. I want it to belong to them. I want them to, be, I want them to take ownership of it, right? And so I just... Shanda la bashanda la bashanda a lot <laughs> about my babies, right? right? And I'll do the same thing with my baby's babies, right. right? You and I don't get to adjust the natural with the natural thinking that it's going to bring supernatural change. And so we have to get into a realm of getting out of the natural. And it's exactly what Audrey was talking about last night, getting into this pursuit of the Lord so that as he fills us, as there's this absolutely, absolute transformation that happens within us, what happens? The overflow of time with him is the supernatural impact of your life that touches everything around you. See, so many times people are like, well, what do I do to become supernatural? You spend time with Superman. Yes. You spend time with Jesus, and then his perspective, his view, his emotions, his desires are in your heart. So when the natural rises up telling you what is and is not possible, you're able to respond from a heavenly perspective and said, I think not. No, that's, I don't accept that. Because I'm not normal. I'm not called to be normal. I never will be normal. So why would I... Submit to the normalities, and not just normalities, the imperfections, perverseness of this world. Amen? And so when it says here that now, it says now is the day of salvation. So that means all of salvation, all of the Zoe life of God, all of the righteousness Right? He made you and I in right standing with God. All of the justification made us as if we had never sinned, justified, took our place, placement in God. Right? He gave us the right, John chapter 1, verse 12, to become, he gave us the right to be called children of God. So now you have this position, you have a title called the child of God. You've been brought into heavenly places to sit with Christ Jesus. He calls you holy and pure and blameless. Why? Because of his spirit within you. Because when he looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees himself. Oh, praise God. Amen. And not only all of that that he did to redeem and place us, but then in that placement says, okay, now your identity, I want you to see yourself whole. I want to see yourself no longer broken no longer traumatized, no longer depressed. So in this position, you need to see yourself the way I see you, says the Lord. 
This is the day of salvation. That's what you and I get to live in every single day. It's not just Sundays. Amen? It's not just when we got saved. No, this is the joy of our salvation. This is the, the, the understanding of walking with our first love that today is the day of salvation. But you can look at situations and say, today is the day of salvation for this situation. Today, I'm prophesying today there is breakthrough. Today my body is, is going to obey me. Today, you start telling your natural life what the day of salvation brings to it. Amen? That could be fun. Again in the scripture, in the time of my favor, I heard you in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you now, now is the time of God's favor. Everybody's thinking it's later, someday, one day. And you've heard me say this before, but we have this relationship with our Bibles, and it's like the one day highlighter. Oh, one day. <laughs> one day. Oh, yes. We get excited about it and think, one day, that'll be me. One day, I'll have my act together, and this blessing, this promise will one day be mine. You and I have to stop thinking of one day mentalities and start saying, this is the day. This is the day. The word of God was not written for you tomorrow. You've heard my husband maybe use the example of the Bible says it's, it's the perfect law of liberty. You look into the mirror like a man looking into a mirror, looking into the perfect law of liberty. That means when you look into this, this is a mirror that reveals to you all of your liberty, all of your freedoms, that you are free from sickness, that you are free from disease, that you are free from depression. This is the perfect law of liberty, declaring what you and I are free for today. Not one day I will be free. And the enemy's like, man, highlight away, baby. Go for it, highlight, go for it. Yes, one day you will be that because tomorrow when you look at that highlighted thing, guess what, you're gonna say, yep, one day. And the next day, mm, one day. And it's this deception of the enemy to keep pushing off our miracles. Because the miracles already were accomplished by the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, not only was his arms spread out saying, yes, we talked about this last night, that all the promises of God find their yes in Christ. He wasn't on the cross like, mm, I don't know. No, it was yes, everything of who he was, he was releasing to you and I. So that all the things that held us captive when he breathed his last and says, it is finished, he was telling captivity, you no longer have the power. It is finished. So all the miracles happened on the cross. All of the things, all of the promises of God became ours at the work of the cross. So you and I already possess, have already been given, been given already been given, promised the miracles of God. In fact, the miracles you need aren't just things you want to see accomplished, it is God himself doing things within your life. It's not that you just need healing, it's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, your healer. Well, guess what? Those miracles live within you. Because God himself, the fullness of the Godhead bodily lives within you and I. Oh man, that's a great revelation. Come on guys. The fullness of the Godhead bodily lives inside you and I. So that means all the character of God lives with inside of us, right? All the aspect of God Almighty lives with inside of us. All the promises of God live inside of us. So your miracle is already within you. But the enemy, when he looks at you, he just sees you as a walking bundle, bursting miracle woman. But he also knows that if he can get you to think that only tomorrow will your miracle happen, you'll walk around holding your miracle for decades, never releasing it because you always think it's tomorrow. And the enemy says multiple lies of why it's tomorrow. 
Well, there's a lot of things you don't know. There's a lot of situations you're failing in. I mean, when you can get your act together and stop failing here, stop being tempted here, get these things fixed, and we believe him. Well, why would, why would God do a miracle in my marriage if I can't stop being in the flesh? I mean, how can God heal my body when I have abused it for so many years? I need to, how did Audrey say it last night? I need to take a bath before I take my, go to God for a shower. Communion. Like, okay, I need to repent. I need to take a bath before I go to God so God can cleanse me. No, that's not how, that's not how the word of God works. That we got to fill all these requirements of things we need to do before then God goes, hmm, okay, well now it's for you. No, today is your day of salvation. And if God saved you and I when we were sinners and redeemed us at that level, then why is today not your day of salvation? When he looks at you and he sees Jesus, um, in the New Living Translation, in the same verse, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, in the New Living Translation, I like how it says it. It says, for God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. I'll tell you, this is how faith starts to build within us. You know, to, today is the right time. Today, now is the time. Does God want you sick? No. So then why doesn't you he want healing for today? Right. Let's think about that. Does God want there to be tension and frustration and brokenness in your marriage, in your heart? No. So wouldn't healing be what he wants today? As we look at situations, they can continue to get worse and worse and worse. Do you think that's God's will? No. No. He wants to do something today. So the, the, the fullness of the kingdom, the fullness of salvation says today is the day. Yes. Uh -huh. And you may say, well, what about God having timing for certain things? Okay, God always has to, timing is today for healing. Right. Because he did it on the cross and said it is yours now. And see, what the enemy will do is says, well, there's an appointed time for your healing. Now, are there things you and I are continuing to learn and grow in? Yes. Absolutely. But that's not stopping God's healing power because he is Jehovah Rapha. And today, he did it on the cross. He says, why would I wait 2,000 years and then decide, you know, I'm going to wait 10 more years, 3 days, 5 hours, and 72 minutes for you. That's not how a loving God works. That's not how a father works. He wants you to have all the blessings, walk in all the blessings. The fullness of his blessings daily are his benefits for you and I today. Guys, this is an attitude that we have to be able to respond to the devil and say, no, no, I'm done. I'm tired with this. I'm done with this. You know, that's why when the Bible says the violent take it by force. It's that attitude within us. I am done. I am done with the devil telling me what is possible. I'm done with how I feel. I'm done with constantly feeling weary and depressed and anxious and worried. I'm done with it. Today is my day. And you make those declarations because you're going to the promises of God. You don't just declare it, but you're declaring it based off a promise. Okay, so this is my promise. And so if the enemy tries to bring it back the next day and say, oh, you thought yesterday was a day of salvation, and look, you feel yucky today. And you're like, today is my day. And I'll tell you, sometimes you have to take ground day by day. Because the enemy seen if he can wear you down, where you just go, I guess it's not the time. I guess it's not for now. And sometimes you have to stand up and say, no, today is the day. I don't care how many days have already been there. Today is the day. And then 
even if it's a, a small inch you took, <laughs> I took it from you, devil. So you guys remember me. I shared at the Healing Is Here this year, I shared about one of my sisters that had gotten COVID and was on the ventilator for 52 days dying. And every day was like, no, today she's healed, today. And we go in and we laid hands on her for today. No, today is, and I don't care how many days that it was, because what you can do is they can say, well, if you're on the ventilator past this many days, it's for sure. And we had to keep saying, no, today is the day. Can I introduce you to my sister, Julie, and have her stand up? Today is her day. I'll just tell you, the enemy doesn't want you to have the fight because you have the victories on the other side. And when you have those victories on the other side, when he tries to bring other things, you're like, oh, you didn't take me here. And you didn't take me here. What makes you think you can take me now? And so then you start walking in a lifestyle of, no, I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord today. <laughs> it says this, <clears throat> In Psalm 69, verse 13, it says this, But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, in the acceptable time, O God. In the multitude of your mercy, hear me in the truth of your salvation. And I love this because you know that God hears you, number one, because he loves you and he's your father. And he said, call upon me, Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. But he, this aspect that he hears you in the truth of his salvation. So when God looks at you and he sees your situations, he's, he's hearing your prayer requests. He's hearing your heart and saying, oh, absolutely. My salvation took care of that. He's not going, oh, are you serious? I had no idea. Oh my gosh, that is bad girl. Ooh. That's not how God hears us. He hears you and I in the truth of his salvation. So when God's hearing our requests, that's why he says, I hear you and I've already sent the answer. I've already sent my word to perform its promises because he hears you in the truth of his salvation. And that's how you and I start then talking to God. You and I start talking to situations. We talk to situations in the truth of our salvation. I don't care what I see, this is the truth. I don't care how I feel, this is the truth. And you start proclaiming salvation. I want to encourage you. I have a, I have a, a devotional out there. But also, if you go to lifefoundations.net, there's a, a month-long series I did called The Goal of the Cross. And in that, we just break down 20 episodes, 28 minutes every day for 20 days on the goal of the cross was to bring you into what? Relationship, intimacy, freedom, what was accomplished on the cross, what Jesus did for you and I that you and I couldn't do for ourselves, and the authority now we possess in the cross. I'd really encourage you, woo. I really encourage you to get that. Part of my anointing fell off. <laughs> There's more redneck, you see. <laughs> Amen. So, when you and I understand the power of the cross, then what do we do? We speak to situations. No, what? Excuse me, the cross took care of this. Amen. When Jesus looked at this, he said, it is finished. Amen? Amen? All right. Another thing that I'm going to encourage you, this God's true nature, it's a scriptural devotional. So it's just scriptures. Because sometimes you and I need to stop reading other people's words about the Bible and just get into the Bible. Now, you should buy all of Andrew's stuff, obviously. <laughs> I'm talking about other people. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. 
He watched the whole women's conference last year. <laughs> he kept texting me, that was good. <laughs> okay, so buy Andrew's books, okay? Um, and mine, and Audrey's. Okay, but I remember I was, you know, this young, eager missionary on the field, and I had, you know, all these books, and I was reading all these books every day, and I was having to learn how to be a leader and learn how to lead a team and all this stuff that um, I hadn't learned in Bible school. Now we teach it in Bible school. But at the time, I was like, I don't know how to lead a team, and I don't know what our gifts and callings are. And so I was studying and studying and studying, and I had all these books, and I had all these notes, and I had them all spread out in my bed, and, and you know, I had all this... I literally would have all these books and papers and I would study, study, study. And then when it's time to go to bed, I would just move them a little ways and then I would cover back up. And in the morning, I'd go to the bathroom, get a cup of tea, put my covers back up on me and move my books in. When I got married, all the books disappeared. Because I decided it was a lot more fun to have a man in the bed than the books. So anyway, so I'm reading all these books, and um, the Lord said, you know, you're reading a lot of other people's opinion about me versus getting in my word and reading my opinion about you. I was like, oh, sorry. So I'm not against reading, but let's just make sure that the Word of God is our priority. So in a lot of the scriptural devotionals that I have out there, it's just scripture. That's all it is. Scripture with places for you to write all of the revelation that the Word promises to give. That the Holy Spirit, as the one who teaches you and leads you and guides you, all the stuff that He wants to speak. Because you can hear a lot through all kinds of speakers and teachers, and that's awesome. Praise God, we can sharpen each other and come alongside each other and do that. But when you get a word from the Holy Spirit, man, it's just like <clears throat> in your heart, right? And that's what we need. We need those words of the Holy Spirit about the situations. Because everybody's got an opinion about your situations. I mean, you even got multiple opinions about your situations, right? And what we need to do is, God, what did you, not your opinion, what's your truth about this situation? And so when we come into relationship with the Holy Spirit, we're saying, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do about this? People will come up to me, they'll come up to the other teachers a lot, and they'll ask, okay, so da 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 the situation, so what do I do? Come on, preach it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Audrey's like, preach it. Okay, so I'm, I'm always saying, well, have you asked the Lord? Right. And they're like, I just did. <laughs> Didn't, don't you have like a special connection to God? No. I got a relationship with God and so should you. Yes. So if you, and praise God, we, counsel's great. Godly counsel's great. A multitude of godly counsel is great. At the end of the day, you don't follow godly counsel, you follow the word of God. That's right. And so... I'll say, okay, so what has the Holy Spirit told you to do? Well, I don't know. Okay, so this is going to be your victory. Ask him what you need to do. Because you and I can have opinion about a lot of different things. We can even have experience about certain things. And that experience, sometimes we feel and other people feel that because you've had the experience, therefore you have the right to tell me what to do. Your life is so beautiful and so unique to God. When God looks at you, he doesn't look at you and say, boring. <laughs> Come on. That's not how God looks at you. Now, you may think of yourself that way. And that's something that God wants to fix. That's something that God wants to redeem. He wants you to see that you stir his heart. Wow. It's what Audrey was talking about last night. Our God as our lover. God is the one we pursue, but praise God, God pursued you and I. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. You stir the heart of God. 
And so I want to encourage you that when you and I are getting into the word, it's, Lord, what does this declare for me today? You have to change the way you read the word. Not like someday. Someday, I'm going to do this for the Lord. Now, can someday, and let me, let me qualify this, can someday mean that there's things that you need to learn? Yeah. I knew that I was called to be a full-time missionary. That was my heart's passion. That's what I knew God had called me to do. Um, but God needed to prepare me because I felt extremely young and inadequate when I left at 21, but I felt a lot more prepared at 21 than I would have if I'd gone and hadn't gone to Bible school. And what, what Bible school did for me is it equipped me, it gave me a message. Not just desire, not just direction, not just passion. Because you can have passion, you can have desire, and you can have direction, but you have no message. And the message has to come. The message of all the places that God has called you and who God has called you to. Your message comes out of your relationship with God. It's not just taking classes, taking tests, passing it, getting a diploma, and then thinking that that's all it's going to take. No, you're going to have to have a lively, dynamic, everyday relationship with God. And that's the intentionality that God's called us to. In this um, God's True Nature scriptural devotional, I have it divided up here. In all the names of God. So God's true nature. So we have Jehovah and Emmanuel and Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our God, our provider. Jehovah Makedesh, right? The Lord God, our... What was it? I forgot it. Sanctification. Thank you. For, thank you. Can I tell you something about Audrey and Elizabeth? I was in the green room last night, and Audrey was telling about her dream. You know the dream that she shared with us last night? And then Elizabeth said, yeah, I've had like four dreams about the end times, and they've been powerful. And I'm sitting, and I'm putting on my makeup in the green room, and I thought, these women are so much more spiritual than I am. Because <laughs> the night before, I'd had a really great sex dream about Mike. And I was telling Mike that this morning, he goes, well, no, that was spiritual, honey. <laughs> we couldn't do this if the guys were here. <laughs> There's just something special about a women's conference. Come on. <laughs> Jehovah Nisi, the Lord God, our banner. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. Jehovah Rohe, the Lord God, our shepherd. Thank you. <laughs> Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace. Jehovah Shama, the Lord God, who is present. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord God, our righteousness, Savior, Redeemer. And in each of these, right, the names of the Lord, then there's every promise that has to do with whether it's peace, you'll find it in under Shalom. Because here's the thing. God always speaks his word from who he is. That's why when you have a living relationship with the word of God, that's you pursuing your lover. See, the Bible's not just this activity of tradition. It's you stirring up your heart and knowing who who he is, and as you're looking at him, as you're pursuing him, as you're spending time in the word of God, what is he revealing? He's revealing what? That perfect mirror, that perfect revelation that this is your liberty. Because of me and because of me in you, this promise isn't just words, it's the declaration of my nature that wants to be lived out in your life today. Not tomorrow, today. And so when you look at the word of God, you're seeing the Savior declare your salvation and your promise for today. Amen. Amen. And so many times people will get into the word of God and they get so frustrated because they're like, well, where's my promise? And so this is why some of the resources are there to help you to get in to find what are my promises. So as you get into it and say, this is how God sees me. This is who I am. And when we talk about 
Now is the time. Today is the day of favor. You know, the way we look at ourselves, you can be disappointed in yourself. You ever got disappointed in yourself? And I think sometimes, you know, what God had to show me a long time ago was I really wasn't worried about what other people thought about me, trying to, I mean, there was a season of life that I was so concerned about pleasing everybody else. And God had to really take me out of that, you know, it's just between me and God. Lord, if you see me as okay, then I'm okay, whether anybody else does or not. But then what I also started to see is I put such standards on myself. I wanted, I started to want to be something that I constantly felt like I was letting myself down. Come on, you could do better than that. Have you ever said that to yourself? Right? Sometimes I'll be driving home. Come on, pick it. You could do better. Right? And sometimes you do need to preach to yourself. Do you know that? Come on, get out of the flesh. I think I've told this story before. I don't know where Sarah is. Sarah is one of the amazing young ladies that is going to be teaching. Oh, Sarah. That's Sarah. She's going to be teaching today in a workshop. So Sarah... Uh, Sarah lives with us, and uh, so I had come, we just finished a meeting, you guys maybe heard me share this, right? I just finished a meeting, and it was a frustrating meeting. Mike and I were both in this meeting, it was just frustrating. And um, yes, you can have frustrating me- meetings in this ministry. Why? Because what are we doing? We're, we're constantly pushing, and, we're, and we're, we're, we're contending to bring the vision. We're constantly pushing into new territory and new ground, and how do we finance it, and how do we develop it, right? So, yeah, there's sometimes there's just days that you're just like, ah, and the only, the only reason that it's frustrating days is because you're trying to do it in your own strength and understanding, right? So, but we'd had one of these frustrating meetings, right? And Mike's behind me, and I'm driving. Isn't it amazing? All the things that you never say in a meeting, you say in your car. (laughs) And praise God, you say them in your car, not in the meeting. (laughs) So I get home, and I, uh, kids, uh, start making dinner. (laughs) And Mike walks in, and he and I look at each other, and I'm like, and I look at him and say, am I in the flesh? He knew exactly what I was talking about. He was in the same meeting. He was all the way home, too. I said, am I in the flesh? And Sarah, in the laundry room, goes, as she's taking laundry out, well, if you have to ask, you probably are. (laughs) And I looked over. And I walked over and I looked, I said, oh, shut up! And I shut the door. <laughs> so every time I have that, like, it's just in the flesh and I hear Sarah's voice, if you have to ask, you probably are. <laughs> this is, there's times you're going to have to preach to yourself. And that's why this relationship with the word of God and God's telling you, hey, now, now, I have, I have the things of the Spirit for you now. I have answers for you today. I have revelation for you that is your breakthrough now. And what, we, what we're trying to do during this theme of this conference is that we stop telling God that later is better. We stop hearing, we stop listening to the enemy when the enemy tells us later is, is what you deserve. Because you, you don't deserve it right now. Yes, you do. You're the beloved of the Father. You've been bought with a purchase, right? You've been redeemed and you've been called into him. You have been brought up to his level. This is what's amazing. Jesus came down to our level so he could bring us to his. And so today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of your promise. And that is something you have to start declaring to those situations. You have to start declaring to the natural things. This is the supernatural declaration I am making. I'm not going to allow the natural to tell me what is possible. Because if I believe with God, all things are possible. Amen? You bring in in God to a situation. But here's the thing. It says God is able to do the impossible to all who 
So that's why you and I can carry our miracle around inside of us. King of kings, Lord of lords, Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rapha, Jehovah, Shama, Sidkenu, who he is living inside of us and not experience it because we don't believe it's for today. Because there's somehow we think that we got to qualify. No, you have been qualified because of the cross. And so now we need to look at that and say, okay, Lord, I receive it. This is who I am today. And you quit letting the natural tell you what is possible. You roar back with the things of the spirit. No, this is my promise. This is what God has declared. And you may say, well, I don't know a lot of the word. All you need is one promise. Come on. When you understand that he is able, you believe, it just takes one promise. Mike says this, he said, it only takes one revelation to change everything. And he says that always when he gives his testimony that for 22 years he'd been walking in religion and works and fear and performance, trying to earn, please, and maintain with God. And he sat in an Andrew Womack service and he heard one message and something came alive in him. And so then he heard the second message and I had a brand new husband. And he says, Carrie, all it takes, and, 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 and the revelation, what Andrew was teaching was righteousness by grace, not righteousness by works not righteousness by what you do. We became righteous in right standing with the fullness of all of God because of grace. And I remember we walked out to the parking lot and he said, you know, Carrie, he said, everything has changed. He said, absolutely everything has changed. So many of you, and listen to me, so many of you have been telling God how long it's going to take him to do something. How much has to change in your marriage? This, and then this, and then this, and this. And you got a long list about what's dysfunctional in your spouse, right? Or your situations, or whatever it is. And you believe it's going to take years for God's word to work. And the enemy's like, that's right, it's going to take years. No, you need to believe that all it takes is one revelation, one verse, One moment of surrender to saying, Lord, I believe today that everything changes. Amen. Okay, so that's for you. Okay, you get to choose to believe what the Word of God says today. Today, now is the time. Today is my salvation. It wasn't just however many years ago you got saved. No, you get to walk in the fullness of God, the fullness of the kingdom, the fullness of his love, the fullness of his promises, the fullness of his blessing, and the fullness of your miracles if you believe for it today. Amen? So, I want you to stand. We're going to take a break after this. Because I know now is the time you need to use the bathroom. (laughs) You're the only one who can decide that now is the time. Now is the time for change and growth and transformation. You can receive the things from God today. And then, let me say this, no matter what the natural tells you, you say, no, 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 it's mine already. And you remind it, no, today is the day. Because the enemy will try bringing the natural things back and say, see, it didn't work. No, it worked. You just have to stand on it. Amen. And not let the enemy get you to surrender your victory. So whatever miracle you're standing for, whatever breakthrough you personally need, you decide today is the day. Because salvation is yours. The love of God is towards you today. The fullness of God is in you today. So you say, okay, I receive it today. I believe that today is my breakthrough. I repent of telling God when. I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day, and, I, and we were talking about hope, makes, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I said something I never said before. I said, the reason 
that hope deferred makes the heart sit, sick is because we gave God a timeline. When you just say, Lord, I hope, and I'm so excited about your timing. I'm so excited about how it's going to be revealed. So there's things you've been contending for, and we believe there's this breakthrough today, right now. So lift up your hands. Father, we just say today is our day. Today is our miracle. Because you already did it on the cross. And so we believe. So we speak to our bodies. We speak to our relationships. We speak to our emotions. We speak to our finances. We speak over our, our children and our husbands. We speak over our dreams. And we say today is a breakthrough day. Because today is a day of salvation. Today I'm loved and favored by God. So I receive it. And I declare it is mine today. And the enemy, you are defeated. And we're reminding you that you are defeated. That you were defeated 2,000 years ago. And again, today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today is the day. We are going to take a short break. Um, I think we're to be back here at 9.40. I mean, yes. 20 minutes. You got 20 minutes, so 9.40. Okay? Do what you do well and quickly. <laughs>